Hey everybody, welcome to The Untamed Chef. I am your host, Chef Albert J. Hernandez, but you could call me The Untamed Chef. We're gonna be demonstrating today how to do a beautiful tuna steak. We're gonna sear it, we're gonna put some cucumbers on there. This is gonna be good, so let's get started. First thing I wanna do is get my heat, we're gonna put it on a medium. We're gonna grab some of our Arbisana extra virgin olive oil, thanks to Rosenthal Olive Ranch. We're gonna put about a tablespoon in there, we don't need to put too much. We have our Cooking Sensation Seafood Seasoning. This is so good. All you gotta do is put some right over the top. We're gonna flip it, get some on the back, and we're in business. Now we're using a yellowfin tuna today. You could do this with ahi, you could do this with any kind of tuna that you want. So we're getting our pan hot, we're getting ready to start doing a burnt sugar soy reduction, but we wanna get our tuna in first. I just use a spatula to do this. Now, when you guys do this at home, be very careful. I wanna mix the oil around. This oil's nice and hot. It's on a low heat, and I'm gonna get it and flip it away, just like this. That way, if it does splash, it's gonna splash against your backsplash. It's not gonna actually splash against you. Now, searing, what are we doing? We're locking in flavor. We're just gonna sear it, turn it over, sear it. We're gonna pull it off, put it on a clean plate, and guess what? It's done. We could get started on getting the reduction going and getting our cucumber as well. So I usually sear probably for about 45 seconds on each side. Now notice that when we're searing, you see that popping happening and that's okay. If it's popping too much, just get your pan tilted forward right there. All that excess oil goes down there and it won't pop anymore on you. It'll still keep searing. And this is the proper way to sear anything, but today we're using a tuna. So I'll push it forward. Keeping that up, we can turn our heat up but we don't feel like we're getting enough heat under there because we do want a lot of heat on there. And you can start to see that color of what we're getting and that's exactly what we want because, we're, like I said, we're sealing in that flavor. Once that flavor's sealed in, we're in a good place right now. So this is done right here. Lay it over to the side. Excess oil, we'll just put it back into our plate so we don't dirty an extra plate. And I'll remove that right now when it cools down. We're gonna turn this to low. We're gonna get our soy sauce. Very low heat. Brown sugar. Just grab a spoon. We're gonna mix this around. So we're stirring it around. We're trying to make sure that we don't turn this into like a brittle or a toffee. So I brought the heat up a little bit, but I'm still gonna bring the heat up a little bit more. And the reason why we're gonna do that is I want this to be nice and thick. It's gonna coat our tuna so beautifully. You're gonna love this, guys. So a little bit more stirring. I'll bring up the heat just slightly, a little bit more here. I'm still watching it, and I'm just gonna keep stirring it. And we're stirring it just to make sure nothing's sticking. If we stop stirring like this, it only takes 10 seconds for this to burn. So now we're getting it stirred up here. You can start to see where it's starting to bubble up on the top here. And that's a good sign. That means that it's definitely getting thicker. Take a look at the back. This is exactly what we want. Now, I don't want to touch that, but I can tell you already that it is ready to go. This is what we want. We're going to take it off the heat, give it one final stir. Put my heat down a little bit here. We'll give it one final stir. And this is our burnt sugar soy reduction that we're going to put on top of our yellowfin tuna. Put this aside. We don't need that no more. Okay. So everybody was asking, well, what's a cucumber noodle? Exactly how are you going to do that? It's real simple. A pillar. We need a bowl so we can put the uh, finished cucumber in. I'm just going to roll down real quick here. There's a lot of ways to do this. I prefer to have a little bit of rind. Sometimes the rind is inedible. But the way I'm going to do this for you guys, I think you'll find that it's very edible. And it tastes really good, too. So we want the cucumber to look just something very similar to what we have right here. Now what I'm going to do, we can discard this extra skin. We're going to go through the rind, and we're going to start to make these noodles. 
So like I said, we're going to get our cucumber noodles. We're going to put them in a bowl right here. Now take a look at this. It's soft, and then we have that rind right here that's going to give this just a little bit of bite and it helps to add to our texture. So like I said, whenever we're doing tuna, we always want to make sure to sear and to have a fresh taste afterwards. That way it's fully balanced out, and that's exactly what we're doing today here on The Untamed Chef. So what I'm going to do is get this nice and cold. We're going to put it in the fridge for a couple minutes, and we're going to come back, and we're going to start on our frog's legs. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Untamed Chef. Like I said, we're going to get started doing some frog's legs. We're going to do them untamed. We're going to do them a little bit different. Now, everybody thinks, oh, frog's legs. I don't want to eat no frog's legs. I got something to tell you. They're really good, especially if you do them the way we're going to do them right now. So let's get started. We're going to bring our heat up to about a good medium. We're going to get our Arbisana extra virgin olive oil with a little hint of lemon. A tablespoon of that. We're going to put some seasoning in here. This is our Cooking Sensations Chipotle garlic seasoning. Good stuff right here. Joey Mila, master spice maker. I love it. So what we're going to do and this pan is hot. We're gonna mix that oil around. Frog's legs are going in. I wanna make sure all that excess water is out. A little bit more cooking sensations on the other side. I'm gonna bring the heat down low. Smells amazing. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna put some fresh lemon zest in here. Now, when you're zesting a lemon, believe it or not, most people cut lemon, they put it on their fish, they put it on their frog's legs. However, the main lemon flavor is found right here in the zest. And we want to just take off a little quarter inch of this zest right here. If we go any further, we're going to be getting that white pith, and we don't want that because it has a really bitter flavor. Oh, this is so gorgeous. And whenever you're doing this, like I said, we want to try to avoid this. We just want to try to get that lemon part. I'm gonna put a little bit more of our chipotle garlic because uh, I want this to have a little bit of kick. Now, some people say frog's legs is like a cross between alligator and chicken. I just say it's delicious. Whatever you're doing with it, it's delicious. And to some degree, nutritious. Look at that, that's just pure protein right there. So if you're on a protein diet, frog's legs are the way to go. I'm gonna give them a little turn here. Now, if you take a look at them, they kind of do look like chicken wings. Am I right? Absolutely. We got these frog's legs going right here. We're going to put these in the oven, 375 degrees, 7 minutes, and we're going to get started on this amazing southwestern Mexican street corn. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we got the frog's legs in the oven, and we're going to get started on making this Mexican street corn that's going to have a really good kick with our frog's legs. First, I'm going to do is we don't want to dirty a lot of dishes. I'm just going to use some paper towels, clean out this nonstick skillet here. A little bit of our uh, Arbasana with uh, lemon from Rosenthal Olive Ranch. Okay, so pretty much when we do this, this is almost like making popcorn. I know that sounds kind of funny, but really, that's exactly what we're doing. We want the corn to pop. We want that flavor to really caramelize because we need it so we can have a fantastic corn that's going to go with our frog legs. It'll complement it very well. More oil is going to go in because I could tell... What we're trying to do is we're trying to do a very, very light fry on our corn. Now we have lemon zest on our frog, so why not put it on the corn? Like I said, when you guys do this, just go up, hit, up, and hit. we have here now is some cayenne pepper. Now, I know there's a lot of people who are like, whoa, cayenne, that's too hot, chef. I promise you, it's not that hot. We're going to have it balanced out with the dish. A 
chili powder. Like I said, it's definitely untamed, and that's what we do here on the Untamed Chef. Now take a look at our corn. It's coming up slowly but surely. It takes about four to five minutes to get the corn where we want it to be at. But we're starting to see a little bit of that color right there, and that's exactly what we want. When the color is there, that means that this is starting to caramelize, and we need all the liquid in the pan to completely come out. It's almost like we're going to be roasting corn on a grill without actually having a grill. And that flavor is really going to pop with our frog. A little bit more olive oil. I'd say about a half a tablespoon. Okay, so that's working down. What we're going to do now is I'm going to put my mayonnaise right here in front. Because while the pan is still hot, I'm going to put the mayonnaise, I'm going to put some cilantro in there. We're going to get it all mixed around. And then we're going to cook it on a low heat. We're going to keep letting it cook down. So take a quick look at what we got here. You hear that? Take a good listen to that. It's nice and it's sizzling up. I'm going to crank the heat up all the way. So when we crank the heat up all the way, you have to remember, now we really got to make sure to watch it because this is where it could burn. It's already got all the liquid has come out already of the corn. So now we're trying to just get it. And you can start seeing it pop a little bit. If you take a look here, you'll see it popping here. And we're getting the color right here. This color right here is what we want. And we're almost there. We're almost getting them all that same color. Got our corn here. It's popping. It's ready to go. This is what Untamed is all about right here, everybody. We are doing it up different. Heat comes down completely low. Mayonnaise is going to go in. We're going to say about a cup of mayonnaise. We're going to get this mixed around in here. Oh, this smells so unbelievable. Look at it. This is exactly what we want. It's mixing around. Flavors are fantastic. We got most of our mayonnaise incorporated. We're going to add the rest of it. To keep that mayonnaise from breaking, I'm going to take it off the heat. Grated Parmesan goes in now. We're going to mix that around in there. And this is our finished corn. We're going to add our garnish in here, which is our cilantro. And what I like to do with the same mayonnaise bowl so we don't dirty any dishes is take it, we put it in here so it stays cool. We want it to stay nice and cool as much as we can before we plate this with our beautiful frog that we've all worked so hard on. Now we're finishing putting this in here get all our corn and we're taking it out of this hot pan that way it stops cooking put this aside so don't go anywhere I'm gonna be right back we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna get started on our beets welcome back everybody so like I said we are gonna make a beautiful beet salad pressure cooked beets that we're gonna finish off in such a delectable way you're gonna think you're in the finest restaurant in New York City so let's get started I got my pan, we're gonna put it on a little bit low to medium heat using our beautiful Korniki extra virgin olive oil from the world renowned Rosenthal Olive Ranch right in the middle. Asparagus tips. I absolutely love asparagus tips. Why I love asparagus tips so much, they're, in my opinion, they're the least woody of the asparagus. So we're gonna throw these in, we're gonna bring our heat all the way up. This does not take long, so we are not going to leave this unattended. Chipotle garlic seasoning. And I'm just mixing around. We're not doing anything else. We're getting a quick little mix. Make sure they're all touching the pan so they cook up evenly. While that's going, I'm going to start to get the plate of where I want this to go for my beets. So very carefully, we want to make sure they're all different shapes. We want to make sure they're all put in a different position. Now, beets are one of those foods where people are like, I wish I liked beets, but I just can't. I can't get over that real 
earthy dirt taste. So I figured out a way, being the untamed chef, how to solve that problem. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna brulee our beets using Rosenthal's white balsamic. We're gonna put it on the beets, let it coat, and I'm gonna torch it. And now you're gonna have the sweet, earthy flavor that everybody's dying to have when they're eating beets. It's still earthy, it's still good for you. And beets are definitely a beautiful and very good food for the blood. So we definitely want to try to keep it as healthy as we can. So you see how we have all our beets here. They're all shaped funny, a little bit different here. We're going to bring it down just a little bit here. We're going to change it up a little bit right here. Yeah, we can move it back. It's not a big deal. We want to have a nice little flow of beets here. So our asparagus tips, they look good. And they're pretty much done. I'm just going to put them, put them directly on. And we're going to get started on our sun-dried tomato. I'm going to bring our heat down. we got a smoke point. If you have a smoke point, just pull it off the heat. It's not a big deal. We're going to do some of our sun-dried tomatoes. We're just going to do a couple of tomatoes here. Uh -huh. Maybe three. Why not? We're just going to run through them real quick here. And I'm not going to put them in this hot pan, not yet. This is our organic pastures, raw butter, McAfee family, doing an amazing job. Sun-dried tomatoes go in. Asparagus tips. We look in between. We want to plate this up. This is the start of it. And then we're going to add more in as we go. sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, these look so gorgeous. Now, if we were to put this directly on our plate, we'd destroy the plate because it looks really pretty. What I'm going to do, put them right here on our block. Grab a uh, towel and just clean that out. Put that on the low heat. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to candy our pecans. Now, if anybody's ever wondered, how do you candy pecans, chef? It's really not that hard at all, and I'm going to show you just why butter butter is always the base you'll learn that right away butter is always the base for whenever we're doing a candy and I'm just using some honey butter and honey very easy pecans go in heat guts to go all the way up this goes really fast this does not take a long time at all so now we've got the butter we've got the honey the cons are in there, they're doing their thing, they look really good. Give that a little flip over. Now remember, like I said, you wanna flip the pan, that's fine. But we don't wanna be constantly just flipping it. If we're constantly flipping it, guess what? We're not cooking the product. And when we flip, just bring it to the front and then let the force pull it right over here. And it flips it every time. So what we're doing here is we're just mixing it around to make sure it doesn't burn. And as you can see, we have caramelization here. This is actually a nice caramel. If we wanted to make a nice, soft, liquidy caramel, i just add cream to this. But we're trying to candy up our pecans. We're going to put them it's in a, a bowl here. We can put this to the side and let it cool down. So now our sun-dried tomatoes. We're going to put these cross right here. Cross them over, that's fine. We can always go back and wipe our plates. That's always the most important thing as a chef or even just as a home cook. We can always go back and we can wipe them down. It's not a big deal. But I wanna have a nice composed salad for you guys to see here. And just letting you know that the flavors that we're using here, we use every day. We just wanted to show you how to do them a little bit different. So we're putting these sun-dried tomatoes here on our beets. We got our asparagus tips. Oh, this is going to be unbelievable. I can't wait to get into this. I'm going to put a little bit more of our beet. I want to make sure we have different sizes for each one of them here. So we got our beets. We got our sun-dried tomatoes. And guess what? We're going back up with our asparagus. The asparagus tips go right over. Now, when we think salad, we think, oh, man, no, I need to have some kind of a lettuce. And that's not necessarily true. When you're cooking untamed, you can do whatever you want. I prefer my green is my asparagus 
I got my beets. I've got my sun-dried tomatoes. And we're just coming over a little bit more here. This looks really nice. And just have fun with it. When we're cooking untamed, we gotta have fun. We gotta be confident. My best confidence comes from me enjoying what I'm doing. So we got a nice looking plate here. Clean our hands up. Let's check our candy. Okay, this is what we want right here. Use our spatula. Oh, this is beautiful. Very, very nice right here. And look at that. I told you guys we had caramel, and guess what? That's caramel right there. Is that pretty or what? So like I said, we took them off the heat. We didn't let them finish because if we let them finish, then they're burnt. We do not want them to burn. So now this is a real candy pecan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this right next to our, uh, our sun-dried tomatoes. And by laying this next to the sun-dried tomatoes and wiping that away, we're not going to get none of that sun-dried tomato oil on these. Oh, this is gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is lay it out. And what we're going to do to make sure this is officially ready, we're going to let it harden onto the board. It's real easy to clean our board. We just use a little bit of hot water. So we're just patting it in. We're going to let this harden up. We're going to plate all of our dishes right here on The Untamed Chef. We'll see you in a minute. Everybody, welcome back. We're getting ready to finish up our beet salad right here. Very beautiful, very sexy the way we're making this thing work. So here's what we're going to do. We chopped our candied pecans. They're ready to go. We're going to put them right over the top. Oh, this is very nice. And I like to just mix them around a little bit. And what I want to do is just put them right on. And I spread them out because I want some of the pieces that are bigger, and smaller to be incorporated fully throughout this dish. So we're just gonna put them on here and lay them on as best as we can. And remember, food is art. It's gotta look pretty, it's gotta taste even better. This looks really nice. Oh, I love this, this looks really nice right here. We did a really good job, everybody. Okay, so our beautiful Bravo Farms. Feta. And this stuff is so unbelievable. You're going to love it. And what I want to do is just try to put the feta. We want to try to put it on nice. We want to try to do everything a little bit symmetrical and make sure that it's going everywhere. But it also feels like it's in the right place because now we have that green. We have the purple. And now we've got this beautiful white right here. This is definitely a nice dish right here in color coordination. But also the textures we have working. we got the candy pecans. This looks fantastic. A little bit more, and then we are going to finish this off with our Rosenthal award-winning white balsamic. We're going to brulee it right on to our beets. So when you do this, we just want to make sure that the beet gets coated. Very important, because we're going to brulee it onto the beet. We'll do one more little bit strip there. There we go. We don't want to put it directly on the beets. We just want to have it. And there it is. It doesn't take long at all. And there you have it. Very simple, very untamed. Brulee beets. Asparagus Tips, Bravo's award-winning feta cheese. Thank you for being untamed with me today. We had a lot of fun. Take a look at our beautiful frog's legs right here. We got that Mexican street corn, spicy, 
unique, different flavor. It pops every single time. And then we finished off with our yellow fin tuna and our cucumber noodles, and we have this nice burnt sugar soy reduction. Thank you so much for coming and being untamed with us today. I'm Albert J. Hernandez. You can call me the Untamed Chef. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.